こんにちは、みなさま。えっと、日本語のタイポグラフィーに入門はよく。あ、I should do it in English. Sorry, everyone. Welcome to the Japanese typography primer.、Um, yes, that was a joke, of course. I don't talk, I mean, I could talk in Japanese, but I want you to know that knowing a bit about typography, you don't need to speak Japanese or understand Japanese. It helps to know a bit about the rules necessary for properly setting Japanese text. Why is this? Because living here in Japan, I often see horrible English typeset、uh, breaking all typographic rules you can ever see, even on official stamps, on official publications. So, if you ever come around setting some Japanese stuff, it might help you. So, what's today's program? So, I will first introduce myself. So, what's my background and why typographer and why I'm speaking about this? And then, A very short introduction to the specialities of Japanese typography. This is all these different writing systems we have here, and how those writing systems are mixed, and about grid typesetting and spacing rules. So let's start with self introduction.、Um, so I'm far from a typographer or far from any business in font design. I'm a mathematician by education. So mathematical logic and theoretical computer science. So what you see in the background is from one of my publications, doing proof theory, manual logic, whatever.、Um, I'm also, nowadays I work at Fujitsu Research,、uh, doing machine learning, topological data analysis and formal verification. I'm also an international professional mountain guide in the, on the board of the Japanese Mountain Guide Association. And yeah, all k i n d of activities. So, but why typography or why Japanese typography in particular? So, well, I got hooked very early、um, high school or junior high school, high school time. I got hooked via language to scripts or via scripts to language. I'm not sure which around, <laughs> way around. So, one of the first non Latin was when I studied ancient Greek in high school. Yeah, I learned the Greek alphabet and Russian, where I learned the Cyrillic. I went on while studying mathematics. I also studied、uh, Tibetan at the university. So I learned Tibetan letters, and then it was necessary for Tibetan to learn Sanskrit. So I learned also Devanagari. And for traveling, then I really, well, I came around for extended travel in Southeast Asia or around the Khmer and the Burmese alphabet, which I really liked. And well, if around 11 years ago I moved to Japan, and now, well, I'm here and doing a lot with Japanese、uh, printing and typesetting. Well, there are a lot of things to do. Still, I really want to learn Arabic, Hebrew, and Hangul. <laughs>、um, I'm not sure when I come around this, but it's still on my list of things to do. So that was, I got hooked onto scripts. I liked them somehow, but what got me hooked into typography and thinking about typography was the typesetting system Tech. Uh, you probably haven't heard about this. It is very common in scientific, mathematical, physics, computer science for typesetting, well, normal documents, and especially because it excels in math typesetting.、Um, it's a long history. I don't want to talk about this as a separate talk. It is developed since the 70s. Just to give you a hint about the abilities,、uh, the paragraph format、uh, introduced by Adobe, like, Five years or ten years ago, I don't remember. Finally, it was open source available already 40 years ago in the tech source code. So, and they could have taken it. They, they, up to five years ago, they did line based、uh, paragraph formatting, which is really bad. It supports also multi script, left to right typesetting, all k i n d of stuff. So, over the years, I got a lot into this tech and tech life. I'm now the tech life, the biggest tech distribution maintainer and doing Japanese support.、Um, I just Give you small ideas about what can be done with tech. So, here is all k i n d of、uh, foreign text mixtures.、Uh, we have Tengwa,、um, books, chess, or poster sessions, all k i n d of stuff, new, usual book design. So, everything is possible with tech.、Um, also, We don't have really time now for a long introduction to the history of the typesetting or history of the Japanese types. I want to show you a few examples that are quite interesting to see what a wide variety of writing s y s t e m and writing styles there are in, in Japan. So, here on the left, for example, you see a typical example of, of, of hiragana writing that was very common some hundred years ago, especially for females. Um, a very, also, very common stuff is that、uh, on 
paintings and poems are combined. So this is then, well, the poems are written, of course, in very calligraphic style. Even for Japanese, it's very hard to read often. So if you go to museums, you often see uh, the, the written, what is written there on the, on the poem printed in normal nowadays letter. Um, that is actually one of my favorite, I mean, it's so crazy, manga style, very old manga style uh, explanation. And here also a very typical example of Japanese art uh, drawings with, with poems on the side. Um, yeah, this is a political uh, uh, organizational text. This shows somehow how a normal formal text would look like. You wouldn't expect something like this nowadays in Japan because nowadays we use hiragana and katakana, but that is also this is only a historical development. Actually, before everything was written in kanji, um, then everything was written in kanji and katakana, and only since like 50 years uh, it switched to write everything in kanji and hiragana and foreign names in katakana. So if you like, I take old books from from math or something, old Japanese math books, they are still written in a, in a very strange way. So let's dive into Japanese typography. So that is, so to say, the, the ideal of typesetting there, aligned typography, line lengths, everything set to the same distance. It's also re be reminded that most of the text here are right to left and top to bottom. And so the kanji, you start here reading here and it goes in this direction. This is very common. It's still even today. So the first book I read is, you would love, it's the never ending story uh, because the first book I read in Japanese, I decided I know, I decided for a book. It starts, as you see, it starts from, well, what we would see the back and it is everything written from right to left, top to bottom. So this is very common in Japan. Practically all printed books, we, as novels, belletristic, is written right to left, top to bottom. Scientific stuff is normally left to right and horizontally. But um, yeah, you get used to this. This is very, uh, this is one of the few remainders. Um, so in China, as far as I know, hardly any publishing is done. Vertical typesetting and even in, uh, in Taiwan, where they have the most traditional kanji is, uh, is also mostly horizontal typesetting. So that's the ideal, everything aligned nicely and nice, but reality looks very different. Um, well, out of many different reasons, right? First, we have a lot of different writing systems here. You see here, we have normal kanji, we have hiragana, we have Roman letters. Here we don't have any katakana. Um, so this is the reality with punctuation, uh, or with punctuation with uh, typesetting in Japan nowadays. So what are reasons of unaligneness? So what, what they are aiming here at is really like a nice block. Like you expect a block set text. The line lengths are all the same, vertically or horizontally, besides the last one, and properly fill the line. So this is, in the, in the ideal sense, this is very easy. Why? Because the kanji, the kanji have all the same dimension, right? They have all the same size. Um, if you know a bit a bit of uh, font technologies, so with normal fonts, you have these kerning tables and uh, glyph size tables. Uh, long time ago, you might remember installing type one fonts with PFM font matrix that give the type system an idea about what the size of the letters are, right? In Japanese or Chinese in all these kanji, they, this is rather easy. They are all one size, right? more or less, we will see there are some half size letters, but most of them are a single sized letter. Like here, practically everything you see besides these parentheses, the, the final dot and yeah, the comma here, they are a bit different. So this is the reason why, why uh, things are getting a bit unaligned. Yeah? So there are different writing systems. You will look at this in a moment. Then punctuation systems. And then there are of course, like with also in the Latin typesetting, special rules for orphans and widows. And then also different typographic development concerning hanging punctuation or indentation and this kind of stuff. So we will go through this slowly. Okay, let's first look at the writing systems in Japan. So there are four different in permanent use, right? So the kanji here, by the way, this is one of my favorite kanji and this is, is it's utsu, uh, depression or melancholy. 
Uh, it was one of the first kanji I learned writing um, because my teacher had, uh, was always funny and uh, <laughs> decided I should learn one of the most complicated kanji first. Um, then hiragana, which is nowadays used for um, a lot of words, but also for grammatical uh, changes. So the kanji are used for the main, for the for um, verbs and nouns and expressions, while the, the hiragana are used for uh, changes in the grammar and indications. Katakana, this form here, is nowadays used mo exclu well, not exclusively, but mostly for foreign words. Uh, my name is normally written in katakana. In science, a lot of expressions are written in katakana as well. And then there are romaji, it's called romaji, Roman, GG is, 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 is characters, or Roman letters. Um, they are normally also appearing in a running text. So, as I said before, it's vertical and horizontal. Both are common, very common. So horizontal typesetting is like what you start normally from left to right, top to bottom, what we are used to. <coughs> Um, this is very common, especially for technical text and newspapers. Uh, well, they have a mixture of newspapers, but technical, uh, anything that, well, scientific, uh, yeah, business reports, this kind of stuff. Uh, vertical typesetting is um, for novels, yeah, newspaper also novels, everything but normal reading material. And you see, it's not just that you turn everything to the right, right? Uh, because the characters are not turned, the characters stay upright, right? And they are put just vertically, but it's not completely because, for example, the dot and the commas, the punctuations, they have special rules. They put here on the right corner and not on the left, like you would expect if you just turn it around. And you see also here that, for example, Roman letters are mixed in here because it's a long word in a turnstile fashion. So these both are very common and there are, there are slight differences in the font and in the layout of uh, in modern open type fonts. So how do you mix Roman letters into vertical text? There are actually several ways. The first for like short um, abbreviations, it's very common to use just the same size, the character frame here, same sized Latin letters in the running text, because that makes it very natural from the spacing. Um, in fact, mo most Japanese fonts actually have a Roman alphabet included that fits exactly the kanji size. So the, if you would type a normal Latin text with this, it would look horrible, but in vertical types in this way, it is fine. Um, for longer words, that doesn't work. That I mean, you can do it, but especially with lower case, it wouldn't look very nice. So for longer text, we just turn around the the Roman letters by 90 degrees and put it in, and then there is a small space separating here. So here there is no space because they fit just exactly in the size and are designed to properly match in size and and spacing with the with the kanji. But here, we, a small space is included. I will talk about this later. There are a lot of other options. Um, so, for example, for numbers, it's very common to, to put, for example, two numbers into the frame here. And uh, actually, you see even four numbers sometimes, a uh, very small one in newspapers to save space. So there are a lot of different options to this kind of stuff. You see, they are, they are, it's getting quite cramped here, but well, that's... So these are the, the three ways normal letters, are, Roman letters are mixed normally into Japanese text. So how is the spacing done? As I mentioned before already, if, if you would put them straight up with the, the kanji frame, there, there would be uh, ugly uh, spacing around here. So normally here, a quarter of an M, a quarter of an M is, is inserted before and after the, the Latin text. So between kanji and Roman letters. So one M, one M is in the Japanese is exactly the size of one letter. So one M is one kanji with height. Width and height are also the same. So here you have one. Well, these are these are tech expressions. You don't have to care about this. So this is one M, one M normally. And here you have normally a quarter of it. Uh, in tech, you can actually define 
different sizes, but the default is one quarter of this. Um, yeah, there. This it, it would look like it is there now. You know, get a quite natural spacing between the numbers and the and the surrounding kanji. Now let us look at the rules for punctuation. So punctuation, there are they are so-called half width letters because you see here they are not they are, they are only half the width of a full kanji. So what happens in the running text normally that these half width letters get an extra half width spacing so that they fill exactly one block, one set, one kanji width in the normal text. So this is, is quite natural. Uh, it is for quotation marks, commas, uh, dots, full dots. There are a few characters that require central typesetting like this middle dot uh, would mostly it relates to what we would use either an dash or a slash. Uh, those characters are set in the middle. So they are defined character classes. I don't list them up now here, but there are characters who fall into this class where you put just a quarter of an M space before and after. And altogether, it's again a full M size, uh, the size of the character. So what happens? if you have consec consecutive punctuation. Now that's getting tricky and the problem is that text editors most of the time just get it like it is, right? They put the half M, uh, the half size comma here, then a space here and then an extra space here and another half size here and the same here again. The, the closing, so these are par parentheses, yeah? opening and closing parentheses, very common. So here you would get also again a half width space, half width space open. That is what is happening in a text editor quite often. What would be the correct output is actually that one of these two is dropped. So that because that looks too far approach, also out, it's spaced out. I mean, if you, so in Roman typesetting, Roman letter typesetting, what we try to avoid is these rivers of white, right? We want somehow a uniform gray impression of the page. And if you have rivers of white, it's not good. And these kind of stuff would create holes in the text. So this is not nice. Here, one of these half width spaces is taken out and only one remains here. And actually by, in this case here, closing and punctuation, they are actually uh, so set up without any spacing, right? So these are, they are again, depending on the classes, there are rules for this when they are set close up. So this would be the what a Japanese would expect. And if you set it like this, people would feel like, mm, what a bad typesetting. And the funny thing is, I see the, the other way around quite often, like we would expect after the comma in Roman letters, after a comma a space, and I often see in, in even in the trains here, in the explanation of the trains, that comma and the following letter is set close up. And that looks strange for me. And I mean, we could avoid these kind of things. So how, what kind of effect does it have? So this would be 10 kanji, just normally aligned in the same length. And if we don't use this special rule, like what has happened here, it would look like this. It, it would align nicely, right? Every of these characters here just fills with its half width space a full width and you get a nice, again, aligned. But because of this open space here generated, what actually should be done is that this is a bit slightly compressed here, makes it nicer. And that makes the line length a bit shorter. Now you could say, well, but why do we do this in the first place, right? Because if we want nice aligned typesetting, then we shouldn't do this when then everything would right. Unfortunately, because there, as I say, there are Romaji characters, the Roman letters, then there are small letters and other spacing stuff in Japanese that anyway, the line lengths will not be exactly uh, matching up. So this, this kind of that they are only uh, proper with characters is very, not very rare, but uh, it's not that common. Okay, so glyphs and orphans, not surprisingly, there's the very same stuff. So for example, if you look at this example here, so you, so this is a closing parenthesis. Yeah, here it's the opening and here's the closing. So the text, again, you would read in this direction, top to bottom, right to left. And so this is the opening parenthesis. So in horizontal text, that would be also the upper one. And this is the closing. And you don't want the closing parenthesis 
alone on a line because that is strange as well this is the same with us if you have the quotes you, the quote should not be on the the final quote should not be on the next line well what happens is we have to shift over one letter from the previous line right because otherwise that would be wouldn't match out so what happens here that they are this is just a bit stretched out and this extra st space is equally distributed between the kanji here so all this kanji between the kanjis there's always a very slight space introduced to actually fill out one m space one kanji space that at the end this last one is perfectly aligned with the Kion Hanman. Kion Hanman, so these are Japanese technical terms. This is the, the frame. When you create the page, you have actually the length is like n 20 characters of a kanji and that many lines and everything spacing is predetermined. Same here. So this character should have been on the previous line, but again, you don't want opening uh, uh, parentheses on on the line on the previous line. So again, here a bit of spacing is uh, entered to to stretch out the line to get it done. Um, line adjustments in general are complicated. So these, if you go from right to left, so this is a nice line, right? There is nothing to do. Well, because we have one comma that is just one comma that gives a nice a full M and everything else are normal characters at the same size. So there's nothing to do. But for example, in this line, we have a comma and the opening parenthesis. And so we get only one quarter of an M here, uh, one half M here and one half is missing. So that hangs out here. Well, that's not good that we don't want. So what happens is that well, the interline space here and here is slightly compressed. Everything is slightly compressed that we can push in the, the re, this is re, down into the line that the last character is perfectly aligned. Uh, another example, so for example, this one here would be one of these cases. We don't want the opening parenthesis on the, uh, on the previous line. So this is pushed to the next. And then, well, everything has again to be stretched out by entering white space between each of the, the, the kanji here on this line. Um, another example of line adjustment here again. So for example, here, this is, a, this is a normal line. Everything works out nicely because there are no consecutive uh, punctuation marks. This is 1M, 1M. So this first line is perfect, no problem. And the second line is here, we lose 1M, right? Because we have, well, consecutive punctuation. And so what happens that this inter the space is here a bit reduced that we, we fill the line exactly to the first line. And here we have again, these two are close, set up close because there are two closing parentheses. And so again, we have one M here that is extra that need to be uh, st again stretched out a bit, the rest of the stuff the rest of the line that we fill the line perfectly to the last. And here we have a normal line that the last line is always easy because, well, you have enough space left. You just put everything like it should. So this is a very common example. This should in principle be done automatically, right? By the type sitting system. Unfortunately, many type sitting systems don't support this. So in closing, this is actually from the Chinese uh, specification of the Worldwide Consortium, but it, it fits very well also to the, to the, to the Japanese one. Yeah? This text alignment is an important feature, right? It is expected the text is aligned top bottom. So flush, flush left, flush right, this kind of stuff is hardly used. And so the spacing has to be, the, the spacing and tracking should be properly Insert into the between the Han or Han characters are the Chinese expression or the kanji in, in, in Japanese and also between the Western and the Han, but please don't start spacing Japanese uh, row margin characters. Okay, so thanks everyone for your attention. That was a very short primer, there is much more to say. Um, if I um, you can contact me here. We have a Q&A session, I hope. I'm not sure if this uh, on in this online session. And um, I'm looking forward for everyone's comments and questions via email or via the online session. And I'm looking also forward to the other talks. Thanks a lot for your attention.